Hello there. I kind of wanted to uh, make a quick video. I don't know how quick this is going to be because if you know my channel, you'll know that I can sometimes ramble unless I'm doing a, uh, uh, you know, uh, an overview of one of my articles for Pro Video Coalition. But um, something that I kind of wanted to touch on, and, and I'll I'll write a, a more uh, detailed thought through review. Um, but I had a few minutes and, and I, and I wanted to talk about, uh, the C500 Mark II, um, and my experience with it over the past few years. Um, because, uh, I've heard that a lot of people don't get a lot of Canon content here on YouTube and, uh, figured it'd be worth bringing back up. Cause I know a lot of people subscribe to this channel due to the Canon cinema content. Uh, and I haven't really touched on it in a while. Uh, and to put it simply, I don't see myself buying another camera, at least not as like an upgrade. Um, I think the, I don't need to hold this the whole time, I don't think, but um, this camera, if I take this, this part off, I mean, it's so small, so light. Um, but the image, the sensor is still, with everything else that's come out, incredible. The features, the, you know, false color and, and the NDs and um, insane dynamic range and everything uh, still hold up to this day. It's, um, you know, you could potentially make the argument for getting like an FX6 for a different type of work. Um, I would get an FX6 over like a FX9. You know, the V Raptor is very compelling. Um, but for my review of the V Raptor, for instance, uh, I compared it to my C500 and while it is an amazing sensor and, and, and red log, um, is or red log, red raw is, you know, just absolutely a dream to work with in post, um, and makes your job easier. I still love the, uh, the work flow of this camera. And also I was able to match the C500 to the, uh, Raptor. I actually sell a lot if you want to do that. Um, pretty much exactly. I'm, I, I couldn't really, besides Red Raw, I couldn't really find a super compelling reason to potentially switch to the Raptor, um, beyond, you know, 8K is really nice. And obviously the, the Red Raw, um, You know, if I, <laughs> maybe a Sony Venice would be a, a solid upgrade, but again, you're not going to get that package this small. You're not going to have, um, there's potentially more features on like the Venice. Um, but the, I, I truly do believe that the C500 Mark II is the best camera that Canon has come out with. C300 Mark III is amazing, but the only thing you're really getting out of that is the extra, um, uh, film, uh, uh, frame rates, you know, um, I found in, there's a video and an article comparing those two, the C500 and C300 I put out last year, I think. Um, and I still like the C500, no matter what camera I put up against the C500, I, I still think the C500 is better. Um, I shouldn't say better, better for me because better is subjective. Um, you know, I, I, uh, started a TikTok <laughs> because not to like, Ooh, I'm on TikTok, but just like, it's clearly the future of social media. And I only like to have a couple. So between that and Instagram, I think I'm set. Twitter is dead to me, not just cause of, but, um, you know, it's just people being angry all the time. And TikTok seems to be a very in, uh, agreeable community thus far. Um, but people are talking about, Oh, I did, I did a quick video about, you know, what makes a cinema camera similar to my C70 review where I went into depth about what is a cinema camera and what is not. Um, and someone said like, oh, why would you even bother saying that one's not better when a cinema camera clear, clearly is? And it's like, well, is it, you know, for who? Um, it's kind of the same thing with cinema lenses. Like people buy cinema lenses and think, oh, I've got a better lens, but it's like better for what a cinema lens is just built differently. I have, sorry, 
So here. Ugh. So here's the cinema lens. This is a Tokina um, ATX Cine Zoom. And the only difference between this and a potential photo version is obviously all metal, but the gearing, you know, the uh, declicked aperture, it's measured in T stops, which uh, it means that if you set this to a T4, all the other lenses that you use that you set to T4 will have the same uh, exposure level because T stands for transmission, which means it's a measured stop versus um, F, which is just the size of the aperture. So you can you know set one lens to an F2 and another lens to an F2 and it won't quite be the same exposure. Um, whereas if it's a T2, it is the same exposure. But anyway, the point is, um, I think of cameras in the same way I think of lenses. Like you, you get something like this if you've got a crew to use this. You know, you've got a first AC who's going to be pulling focus. Pulling focus on this manually is just going to be a pain. It does make it easier if, if no one's really moving that much and you can make little micro adjustments that aren't very obvious. But cinema lenses aren't inherently better looking or... Um, you know, a lot of times they won't have folks breathing, but especially with like rehoused lenses, you know, like those are stills lenses still. And, and a lot of times you can't fully correct out, um, focus breathing or anything like that. So it's the same thing with, with cameras, you know, for, uh, going back to the red, like I can't do no NDs. Like I need them. I, I need, I rely on them so heavily, especially if I'm using, for instance, I use, uh, Nikkor primes a lot. You see, I've got this geared, but, um, 3d printed that myself, but, uh, you know, that this actually my, um, filter thread here is bent. So I can't put any filters on there and I don't really like running a matte box so much. I don't find it necessary because I have the internal NDs. I don't want to screw on NDs. I like to be able to adjust it on the fly, especially if I'm doing something in, you know, incredibly run and gun or whatever, but even on a professional shoot, you know, having the built-in NDs and knowing that they're high quality NDs is huge. Any camera is only the best for you. It's not uh, a matter of best objectively because most sensors these days are incredible. I wouldn't necessarily be thrilled doing it, but I could absolutely make a film on my X100V here. Um, the sensor in this is amazing, especially in the new Fuji films, the F-Log2. Oh, you, it's like 15 stops of dynamic range or something absurd. This you know, F-Log1 is uh, maybe like 12 or something, but still, you can work around that. You know, I think film tops out at 12 stops. Uh, sen all sensors are amazing. It just depends on, all camera bodies are, are kind of just workflow considerations. Um, and to bring it back to, uh, the thesis of this video, um, the C500 for me is the most agreeable workflow for my work. There's certainly going to be times when an Alexa or a Venice is more applicable or more, um, reasonable for the shooting situation, but those are going to be film sets, you know, commercial sets, something like that. Um, for my day to day work, the C 500 has yet to let me down. Never failed on me once in the past three years. Um, again, full frame sensor. Love that. Love the added detail in that because, uh, you know, a larger sensor isn't necessarily about depth of field or whatever. And I could go into a big diatribe about that, but, um, the added physical resolution does give you better resolving power, um, which I do appreciate, you know, the image, uh, quality is better regardless of crop factor or whatever the hell, uh, you know, like I said, all the buttons there's I, cameras don't seem to have most other cameras don't seem to have like, um, buttons that you can remap. And on this, you've got 15 or so looks like 15, um, a, buttons that you can make anything, anything in the menu, you can just do it. So like I can leave both my hands on the camera and just type on one side. And, and these are all kind of, um, tactily designed, you know, there's like a raised middle. So you know where your finger is at all times and stuff. And it's just got every feature I could possibly want. The SDs work and they're still updating the firmware. Not as fast as I'd like over there at Canon, please more features do the Fujifilm thing of 
constantly upgrading. But uh, Black Magic does the same thing. Or you're just always getting, you know, it seems like every quarter you get a new camera because of the firmware update. But uh, especially, I should mention with the uh, full frame Camera Co V Lock plate, where you just do that. Um, this thing becomes perfect. I would be, I would happily shoot a feature film on this thing. Um, you know, for my podcast frame and reference here on uh, YouTube and also on any podcast platform you enjoy listening to podcasts on. Um, I talk to plenty of DPs who shoot Canon, mostly in the documentary space, but, um, the gentleman that shot Grace and Frankie, uh, shot Canon, uh, I believe the whole, t- except for like the first season, first couple seasons shot Canon. And the final season was shot on the C500 Mark II and the C700 full frame. And, uh, you know, I think people are always looking for proof that their camera of choice, the thing they've invested in is, um, worth, worth it. Uh, and I think that's a little short sighted because you don't need proof. You don't need proof that the thing you chose, you don't need outside proof that the thing you chose is correct. You just need, does it work for you? Right. Um, that being said, again, great option. Expensive. This thing, you know, still costs 16 grand, but, uh, you know, for me, it's already paid itself. It paid itself back in the first year. Um, because while the C100 Mark II that I'm currently filming on, um, absolutely pulled its weight for the five, six years that I used it primarily, um, there was a big enough jump to the C500 where it made sense. You know, the added dynamic range, the added um, features and uh, assistance features, stuff like that, and 4K and 6K, you know, uh, those things are starting to become far more valuable in a world where you need a lot of formats, for instance, but also just more room to uh, hone in your uh, look in post and your framing and whatnot. Because like certainly uh, corporate clients, don't aren't creative, don't know the limitations. So it's your job to deliver, um, what they want. And you can't say like, Oh, my camera doesn't do that. Or like, Oh, you, you can't say, you can't say anything. You just have to deliver. I have found that the C500 has delivered, um, nonstop, but you know, I had to think of something that it doesn't do well. I suppose I would like some accessory power options, you know, the, the, um, the full frame camera V lock plate has a D tap port, which is nice, or I can run D top off of the battery itself. Um, so that works, you know, I can use a, a D tap multiplier, whatever you want to call that, where you can get more ports. Um, having it built into the camera would be nice. Um, this door is made out of plastic. That's kind of been scaring me a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's it's just an absolute workhorse of a camera. And like I said, I don't see myself upgrading, purchasing an upgrade at least for the next five years. Because this thing doesn't have a look. Like even the C100 I've gotten away with using for stuff that people have no idea. But especially how modern of a tool the C500 is. Um, if I needed something else, I would just, that would probably be a gig that's big enough that I would have a budget to rent. And that would probably become a, uh, that would be dictated by the production probably, you know, like, oh, we need to shoot Alexa for X, Y, Z reason or something like that. Or obviously if you're going to work on a feature film, they tell you what they're using. Um, you know, I, I was a second unit on a, or additional photography on, um, the new Bruce Willis film, uh, detective rogue, uh, independence which is the end of a trilogy with uh, Bruce Willis. And um, yeah, they were like, we're shooting Alexa mini. Here's the lenses that we shot. Cause I was matching, you know, um, stuff they'd already shot. You know, uh, I would not go in there and say like, Oh no, I've got a better option. Cause yeah, it was, trust me on that shoot. It would have been easier for me to use the C500 because of the uh, added assistance features and whatnot. But um, you know, I shot a short, I was the first AC on a short film called when you became us. And, uh, we were shooting Alexa mini and I brought my C500, uh, at the request of the DP, who was a friend of mine, 
um, and just as a backup, just just in case. And sure enough, like almost immediately, we had this crane shot that opens the film and we didn't have a reliable way to um, monitor and pull focus. There was some issue where putting the mini on this crane in this bedroom um, was going to be tough. Like we couldn't we couldn't get a signal out of it or something. It was, it was just not going to work out. So we put this on the uh, on the crane, set it to autofocus, and just ran it a few times. We shot raw, obviously, so that we um, had as much flexibility as possible, and also to match to the Alexa. Matched fine. No one noticed. I saw it in theaters. Um, the short film was at a uh, film festival, and uh, I I knew what was coming and couldn't could not tell. You know, they all matched. So. Um, yeah, to those of you, I'm going to, again, keep this short, and then I'll make kind of a more detailed response to my initial article three years ago when I bought the camera first. You know, I, I don't know if you know this. This is serial number eight. I was like one of the first people in America to own this. It was me and this other DP, uh, some woman who whose name escapes me at the moment. But um, so I've had, a, I've had more experience than most people with this camera, and can't say I... I like I want, like inside, I want to say that there's something bad about it because, because I'm a scientist at heart and, um, you know, you, you never want to say like, oh, there's been a decision. It, it's final, but, uh, I can't recommend it enough, man. Like, and going into the idea of like other cameras that you may own, I upgraded to this camera because there was a production necessity for me. I was getting more demands for 4K, um, more demands for a more modern look than the C100 was giving me. Um, and more for me personally, how fast I was being asked to work, I needed more flexibility in post. I needed to be able to shoot, uh, use the camera as a data collection device um, and uh craft my image in post then with the c100 which doesn't even really have log c log one isn't really long and that's why i made that um, c100 picture profile that you're currently looking at which is sort of based off c log but it's really just kind of high dynamic range at uh 709 <laughs> um sdr you know uh but yeah i was getting more demands for for better looking stuff and so so the uh upgrade was necessary um, especially because I was kind of like losing jobs that were literally just saying like, oh, we need 4k, you know, it's like second cam stuff or whatever. Um, but if you're whatever camera you currently have, especially if you're just doing stuff creatively, stick with it, man. Like don't, especially these days, money's tight, you know, um, inflation and corporate greed and all that, especially going into these tighter pocketed times. It's important to remember that at the end of the day, this is a creative medium and, uh, the tools that you work with. I just talked to Vincent DePaula, CSC. He shot Firefly Lane. He's now gone on to work for uh, The Flash, I believe, some DC show. And um, one thing that he said, this will be on the podcast at the beginning of season three. It's not out yet. I just talked to him an hour ago. Um, but he, we were talking about how like every camera is just a pencil that helps you write a book. You know, Be, you know, everyone always says, I know that's frustrating. Like, oh, it's not the tool, it's how you use it. But truly it is, and, and you're able to um, craft the look. But something I should mention is like, again, one of the reasons why I switched to the C500 was for RAW and C-Log2. Again, so I had more flexibility, more dynamic range, um, and uh, a more modern uh, look. But it's not like this looks bad. This doesn't look cheap or anything by any stretch. Um, but for a professional setting, um, it wouldn't work. And then actually it does for certain gigs. Um, you show up with a C100 and they're going to be like, I asked for a film quality thing, not a video quality thing. And that's kind of short sighted on their part. But, you know, I've used this as a B cam. I actually use my X-T3 as a B cam a lot, just so I have 4K and 4K. Um, but yeah, this has kind of gone off the rails. Like I said, I'll, I'll put together an official... Uh, rebuttal or uh, uh, up, update to my initial article and video about the C500 that came out a few years ago. Um, I've certainly gotten better at coloring it, <laughs> the footage from this thing. But um, that initial like test I did that like 
a month after I got it. I still didn't quite know how to, I was so stuck in my ways of coloring C100 footage that I uh, didn't quite, I've, I've become a much better colorist in the past three years. I'll say that. I've even colored a few uh, indie features and a couple documentaries, uh, which is cool. Um, it's a fun job to have being a colorist. Um, but even though that the title of this video is like C500 update, the update is it's still growing strong. Um, and, uh, I, I don't have, look, it's still clean. I mean, I've taken this, I've beaten the hell out of this thing and it's still going strong. There's the update is it's still great. So, <laughs> so I suppose, uh, we could use this as a launching off point. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've rambled about in this video or any questions about the C500, feel free to ask. I'm, I'm really quick to respond usually. Um, to YouTube comments or uh, Instagram or even TikTok comments. Um, the people on the TikTok, you know what's funny? The people on the TikTok, the thing they were most uh, amazed about was smart slates. I'll show you. Hold on. You know, you, you have a YouTube channel for six years. You get 3,000 subscribers and a couple hundred views per video. You put all kinds of work into it. You make a five-minute video about... Smart Slate. This one's from Deity. It's very nice. Um, and you get more subscribers on TikTok than I have here and uh, 300,000 views on the Smart Slate. People don't know about Smart Slates, apparently. Uh, so if you'd like to, to know more about this, I'm actually going to write a review about this. This thing's very nice. Check this out. You can do this. You can have that say anything. It doesn't have to say Alexa, Log, C, whatever, whatever. That's just handy for the editor. You can say like, I love you. <laughs> you know, whatever you want. Name the editor. Um, man, this has really gone off the rails. Anyway, point is, um, C500, I still think three years later, is absolutely the king of the crop for for uh, consumer cinema cameras. Um, I think probably right now the best cinema camera for film, for film use, film and television use, is probably the Sony Venice, Sony Venice 2. Um Obviously, the Alexa 35 is right behind it. I haven't used it yet. I don't know too many people who have used it yet. Alexa LF, obviously, amazing, amazing camera. The Venice just has uh, more features, in my opinion. And you see it used a lot. Shot Top Gun. Um, you know, because you got that Rialto extension and stuff. But, uh, yeah, C500, if, you, if you've if you got the cash and you're looking to invest in a camera, can't recommend it enough. Um, C300 Mark III, if you're... Uh, if you want to save 5,000, uh, you know, get a C300 Mark III and a C70 combo. Uh, and then you've got an amazing two camera setup. The C70 is truly an incredible camera. If you're not doing cinema work, uh, if you're not doing high end commercials, although the C70 could handle, handle its own in like a commercial environment, except for it doesn't have SDI or time code. No, it does have time code. Um, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, great options. And then on the Sony end, I'd say ignore the FX6. Because that's the thing. Like, the C500, I said, was better than the FX9. Uh, and I seem to be proven right, because no one gives a shit about the FX9. But the FX6, rad. FX3, dumb. Don't buy that. It's stupid. It's a stupid camera. Uh, and I'll I'll say that a lot. No hate. Uh, but just get a you know, save some money, get a, get an a seven. I guess having the XLR handle is super handy, but like, it's not a cinema camera. It's just a rehoused a seven. Um, and then black magic, love them to death, but, uh, I'd love to see something more robust and a little more thought through. Um, the image out of that is amazing. Raw out of that is amazing. The menu system is incredible, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't have many of the features that I'm looking for. Um, just got NDs. The autofocus is still be, um, autofocus on the C500 saved my life a whole bunch of times. It's incredible. That's the thing with the C500. I've deployed it in every possible scenario and it never fails me unless it's super fucking dark. Then, you know, autofocus might hunt a little bit, but aside from that, like I'm able to shoot in black and just image still looks great, you know? Um, so yeah, like I said, maybe half halfway through this video ago, <laughs> this is a ramble. Um, feel free to ask me some questions. We'll use this as a jumping off point uh, for the end of the year. Um, just do a little, we'll make this a Q&A, so to speak. And um, 
yeah, the update on the C500 is still amazing. And, uh, you know, if you're worried about what you're packing, don't, because I'm sure it's great. Even the, even though I just said that about, about black matching the FX3, if you have those things, great. Use those things. They're amazing. The F, I think the FX3 has that like catalyst. I, I poo pooed the catalyst, um, sort of gyro, uh, stabilizer. I would much rather have that now, three years later than the inbuilt one in the C500. Um, C500 one's still good, but it's not great for like too much handheld. It's really good for like stabilizing. Well, handheld, but not like moving, you know, whereas that catalyst thing, now that it's a little more streamlined is, uh, apparently pretty rad. I haven't used it, but, um, God, all right, wrap this up, Kenny. Thank you so much for, uh, subscribing to this channel. Um, you know, I'm not going away. Hope, hope to make more content for you, uh, in the upcoming year. Um, let me know, you know, more stuff you'd like to see. Obviously the majority of my videos come off the back of my reviews for pro video coalitions. So there's that, there's not really a schedule that I, that I have here. I'm not making any money off this damn thing. <laughs> no, no video is monetized. If you've seen a, an ad on this, uh, on any of my videos, it's cause, uh, Google is taking it. I, I don't, uh, intend on monetizing this channel. Um, you know, unless I get whatever, <laughs> 2 million subscribers or something like that, then maybe we can talk, but don't see that happening for me. Um, yeah. So feel free to ask some questions in the, uh, comments. Feel free to trash guy. Uh, yeah, just gonna let him do that. Uh, feel free to, uh, subscribe to, or follow me on TikTok for like quick tips and stuff. It's a lot easier to make those videos because they're just quick, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, basically a video that almost doesn't do what I said it was in the title. But like I said, this is kind of a ramble and uh, I just had some time to, I guess, wet your whistle for an upcoming <laughs> legitimate, uh, C500 update update. But again, I don't really know what it would contain because Everything I said in the original video is still true. Um, so that'll be a wrap on this video. It's probably too long and you're probably annoyed with me. Let's talk in the comments. Uh, peace.